If you've seen many of my other previous videos, you'll recognize this as our front flower bed. This is a small flower bed, and in here, over the years, we've had several things planted, including cabbage, broccoli, and Swiss chard. Right now, what we're doing is we're putting in some Mexican heather. The reason why we're putting in Mexican heather is because it makes a great ground cover, which helps reduce weeds. It doesn't take as much watering or feeding. It's a lot less maintenance, but primarily because it is an awesome bee attracting plant. Bees love Mexican heather and other plants that I'll show you here in this video. So this video is to help you consider what you might be able to plant in your yard to attract honeybees to your area to help pollinate your plants and to add beauty to your landscape. This is the other flower bed that we have in our front yard and you notice a, quite a big transformation from the last time I videoed this in my off-grid living experience videos where I was spending a lot of time watering. Here we've really replaced a lot of the plants with the Mexican heather and as you can see it's very beautiful here. We got the plants at no cost from our neighbor who had them all over her front yard and wants to remove them because her grandchildren are afraid of the honeybees. So I know where my honeybees have been going to get a lot of their nectar and that's just down a couple houses to my neighbor's house. She very graciously offered this to us and any of the other Montgomery County Beekeepers Association members and friends of mine who want to attract bees to their property to help with pollination and honey production. So after very little work we have transplanted five Mexican heather plants into our front flower bed. I think they look great. Now let's go take a look at some other plants that are great honeybee attractors. Another advantage with the Mexican heather is that it's a perennial. It may die back a little bit when if it gets really cold but once you plant it it'll be there for a long time. Some people say that it's invasive. That just means it's growing where you don't want it to grow. So just make sure you have space for it to grow out and fill in. But it's a beautiful plant. This is called Vitex. This is also a flowering bush. We've just planted this this year, so we don't have any personal experience on how well it attracts the honeybees. However, with the recommendation of those who know in the beekeeping club, we planted this. I don't know if this is a perennial or not. If you do, please comment below. But this is supposed to attract the bees to the garden. What we have here is called pink coral vine. This is another recommendation from other beekeepers. What we've done here is we've taken several cuttings and we've planted it against the back fence. Now we'll need to trellis this up the fence, but the idea is that will bring the honeybees over into the blueberries, which we have growing right here, and help them have lots of nectar so they can make lots of honey. I understand that this does die back in winter, but it will come back in spring. This is African blue basil. This is the all-star champion mega bee attractor. If there are going to be bees anywhere in our garden, it's going to be on the African blue basil. We got this also as a cutting from a member of the Beekeepers Association. It was a little twig, maybe about four or five, six inches long, and I planted it in this bucket. That was a year ago. It made it through the winter and grew back. I didn't do anything in particular, but as you can see, half the plant is flowers. It just really grows right here all the way up these long flower stems here. Now I took this last week to the Montgomery County Beekeepers Association meeting and I gave everybody cuttings from this plant and you can't even hardly tell that I did that. But as you can see, this is the first plant that has bees on it and this is the first place they go. They love this African blue basil. Besides it smelling great, it is a wonderful, beautiful plant and great bee attractant. Now I live in Houston, so the flowering plants that you have in your area may be different than what I have here. Check with your local University Ag Extension or Master Gardeners Association, but best is join a local beekeepers association. I'll have a link below where you can go and find beekeepers associations in your area and join that club, become involved, and ask questions and ask them what are good plants in your area to attract honeybees to your garden. If you do have one of these bee-loving plants, feel free to share it. Give people cuttings. 
And the more that you do that, the more your plants will thrive. You can see this right here. This is where I cut it last Monday. It's been just a week. And you can see it already has new growth all over the plant. Everywhere I took a cutting off, we have new growth. So by sharing, you're really blessing yourself. I wasn't aware that this was going to happen. It's a wonderful thing to be able to give and receive at the same time. So if you're going to give someone a cutting, how would you do that? You're going to look for a stem that has some good leaf growth. That's what we're going to look for. I'm also going to find one that has some flowers on it. So this one looks good right here. I'll just go ahead and cut this right here. Okay, so what we really have here is we have at least two cuttings. And I'll show you what I mean. We're going to cut it right here. Then we want to remove all the flowers. We don't want the plant to be working on growing flowers. So we're going to take this off here. We're going to take this off here where we get flowers growing. And we're going to take this off here. So in reality, this is another two plants here. We could easily make this one cutting and this another cutting. Oh, there's another flower. Then what you would do is you'd cut this here and there and take off these lower leaves. Or if you wanted to make this one cutting, which you can do, you just take off these leaves down here. Try not to strip the bark. And then you want to tell them to plant it below the first little nodule here where you remove the leaves. So in this case, it would be here if you remove the leaves there. But that's a nice cutting. Just stick that in some soil, water it, give it a little nitrogen, and you will have yourself a big, beautiful African blue basil. This is definitely bigger than the cutting that I received, but as you can tell, this really does grow into a beautiful plant. This is about three feet in diameter here from a little cutting about this size. So be generous, share, and you'll be blessed. This is LDS Prepper reminding you, if you are prepared, you shall not fear. And if you add a few plants that attract bees to your garden, your harvest will be greater than ever.